The leaders of Germany, France and Italy are in Ukraine on their first visit to the country since the start of Russia's invasion. The trio just met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv. The EU leaders earlier toured the town of Irpin, which saw heavy fighting at the start of this war. Ukrainian officials showed them the wasteland of ruined buildings and broken cars. Kyiv claims Russian forces committed numerous atrocities in Irpin, including shooting at cars carrying women and children. Mr. Macron affirmed that the war crimes were clearly carried out in the broken city. Une ville dévastée, c'est à la fois une ville héroïque, puisque c'est ici que, les, entre autres, que les Ukrainiens et les Ukrainiens ont, ont arrêté l'armée russe qui descendait sur, sur Kiev. Et donc il faut se représenter l'héroïsme de, de l'armée, mais aussi de, de la population ukrainienne. But the bigger agenda on the leader's visit is the support that they can provide to Ukraine. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says that he and his fellow leaders want to assure Kyiv that financial, humanitarian and military help will continue. Mr. Macron, meantime, also emphasized that the defenders must be able to resist Russia and win the day. For more, Rosie Bircher joins us live from Brussels. Rosie, the three leaders visit. It comes just a day before the EU is expected to make an announcement uh, with regards to Ukraine's bid to join the bloc. Now, th this visit took weeks to organize. All three of these leaders, they have seen criticism within Ukraine about their response to its needs. How far does this trip now indicate a clear sign of EU's support? A very high profile visit, a very highly anticipated visit, but whether the expectations are high, really still Another question. Now, Kyiv has been seeking three big things from EU governments. First of all, uh, support when it comes to weapons to be able to be strengthened on the battlefield. Secondly, it's been looking for sanctions against Russia to tighten the screws on the Kremlin's ability to keep financing the war. And third, Kyiv wants a seat at the EU table. Ukraine wants to become a member of the European Union. And in, on Friday, the European Commission, headquartered in the building behind me, is expected to make an announcement to say that it will formally recommend that Ukraine be granted candidate status for the European Union. Now, that is just the first of many steps, and it will also then go on to EU leaders, including these three, um, Emmanuel Macron, Olaf Scholz and Mario Draghi, to decide among them whether or not to grant that candidacy after becoming a candidate country that could still be many years before you get a formal accession for Ukraine into the European Union. But based on the conversations I'm having with diplomats here in Brussels, there is still no consensus among the 27 EU members as to whether this candidate status should indeed be granted when the leaders meet here in Brussels next week. So Ukraine is likely to be pushing these EU leaders for this today. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sitting down at the table with the leaders of the EU's three biggest economies, and he'll likely be making a strong, his, what he sees as a very strong case, uh, echoing words we've heard from the president before, that he believes Ukraine deserves a seat at this table and that would offer a huge morale boost for Ukrainian citizens and soldiers as these Russian attacks continue to know they have a clearer path toward joining the European Union. Whether or not we'll get any clarity on that today remains to be seen. Well, to be clear, Rosie, since the start of this war, uh, Germany, France and Italy, they've all provided Ukraine with a great deal, a tremendous amount of support. But they're, they're still at odds with Ukraine as to how quickly they will supply weapons shipment, uh, a lack of support for, for, uh, th that uh, Ukraine says is evident in, in, in recent weeks. Do we expect any major outcomes or expectations from today's talks between these three leaders and President Zelensky now? You're quite right to note that Ukraine has, to some extent, at least criticised these countries, particularly Germany and France, on different fronts. First of all, France has been criticised by Ukrainian officials for President Macron's rhetoric around how he thinks this, uh, the, the, next, the next steps should follow. Macron has said in the press on two separate occasions that he doesn't think Russia should be humiliated or that there is no success to be had in just trying to pursue humiliating Russia. He says that's because at some point Ukrainian and Russian officials are really going to have to negotiate here. 
Now, that is a highly unpopular statement in Ukraine and also in other Eastern European and Central European countries which have publicly condemned Emmanuel Macron for this kind of rhetoric. Emmanuel Macron standing by that, however, having said it twice. He did, however, say today in this visit to Ukraine that he believes there is absolutely no ambiguity when it comes to France's support for Ukraine. Germany, on the other hand, has been accused of dragging its feet when it comes to uh, delivering on promises on providing the weapons that have been pledged for Ukraine, particularly those heavy weapons that Ukraine says are very much needed on the battlefield. Germany, however, has very recently announced a new pledge of, to deliver multiple launch rocket systems. That's one of those types of heavy weapons Kiev has so strongly been calling for. Rosie, thank you for that. Rosie Birch there in Brussels.